Morvid Florian Owen was born on the 1st of October 1891 at Rayforest Glamorgan and was a Welsh composer, pianist and mezzo-soprano. A prolific composer as well as a member of influential intellectual circles. She died shortly before her 27th birthday. Though Owen only composed seriously for just over 10 years, she left a legacy of some 250 scores. These include pieces for chamber ensemble, piano, mixed choir and tone poems for orchestra. However, it was her compositions for voice and piano that are regarded as her most important and mature contributions. Her most well-known include Slumber Song of the Madonna, To Our Lady of Sorrows, Sue O'Garn and her masterpiece in Welsh, Gwynedd Er Pechadir. In the century year of her death in 2018, Prom Season Programme, the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and its principal conductor, Thomas Sondergaard, performing the Nocturne in D-flat major for full orchestra of 1913. Her parents were both amateur musicians who ran a drapery business. She was a musical child, showing great talent at an early age and received piano lessons early on. While in her teens, she appeared as a soloist in a performance of the Grey Piano Concerto. At 16, she began to study piano and compositions with Dr David Evans in Cardiff and had her first published work, a hymn tune entitled Morvith, produced in 1909. After two years of study with Evans, she won a scholarship to study at the University College in Cardiff and was formally admitted into the composition class. Many of her works were performed in student recitals at Cardiff and she graduated in 1912. That same year, she was admitted to the Gorseth of the Barns at the Wrexham National Eisteddfod under the name Morvith Thloyne Owen, honouring the place name of her father's Montgomeryshire home, Plas Thoin Owen, by adopting Thoin as her middle name. Owen's parents were reluctant for her to continue her studies in London, but were persuaded to allow this partly by the intervention of the Liberal politician Elliot Crochet Williams. Morvid and her father had jointly set Crochet Williams' poem Lullaby at Sunset to music, and her father wrote to him requesting permission for this to be published. She gained a BA in music in July 1912 and was accepted by the Royal Academy of Music on the Goring Thomas Scholarship, which she held for four years. Starting at the Royal Academy in September 1912, where her principal study was composition with piano and singing as second studies. She received individual composition lessons with Frederick Corder, who taught several other notable British composers. A very successful student, she won two prizes in her first year, the Charles Lucas Medal for Composition for her Nocturne in D-flat major and the Oliviera Prescott Prize for General Excellence. Continuing to accumulate awards during her time at the Royal Academy where her works Songs, part songs and piano pieces, including a sonata. Pieces for violin and piano, trio for violin, cello and piano were performed. While she was in London, she formed two separate circles of friends. The first of these centred on the Charing Cross Welsh Presbyterian Chapel, which was a central gathering point for many Welsh people living in London. She developed an especially close friendship with Lady Ruth Lewis, the wife of Sir John Herbert Lewis, the Liberal MP for Flintshire. Lady Lewis was an important figure in the Welsh Folk Song Society of London and invited her to become involved with the organisation. More they've obliged and transcribed, as well as wrote a compliment to many pieces for collections of Welsh folk songs. She provided musical examples to illustrate Lady Lewis's lectures on folk song, and in 1914 they collaborated in publishing folk songs collected in Flintshire and the Vale of Cloyd. Morvith Owen knew David Lloyd George, then Secretary of State for War, who commissioned a work and chose her as the soprano soloist at the Carmarthen Ganny of the Nationalised Steadford in Aberystwyth in 1916. 
Owen's other social circle was centred on Hampstead, where she shared a flat with her friend Elizabeth Lloyd. Hampstead was the centre of the London literary set, and she associated with several of its members, including the writers D.H. Lawrence and Ezra Pound. Mothers was friends with several Russian emigres, including Prince Felix Yusupov, who had been involved in the assassination of Rasputin and Alexis Chadok Gregory, who proposed marriage. It was through her Russian friendships, as well as influence of her work with Lady Lewis, that Mothers developed a fascination with Russian folk song. In 1915, she asked for and received a fellowship from the University of Wales to visit St. Petersburg to study the folk music of Russia, Norway and Finland. Unfortunately, the First World War made overseas travel impossible. Having developed a voice as a mezzo-soprano, in 1913 she sang four of her own songs in a concert at London's Bechstein Hall, Chanson de Fortunio, Song from a Persian Village, Suogan and The Years at the Spring. The same year, her Nocturne in D-flat major was performed at the Queen's Hall and she won the first prize for singing at a regionalised Stedvod in Swansea. Her professional debut as a singer was in January 1917 at the Aeolian Hall in London. In July 1917, she premiered a performance of Harry Farjon's song cycle, A Flute of Jade, at the Birkenshead Nationalised Stedvod. Later in the year, his setting of the song for Jean's Sick was performed at the Henry Wood Promenade Concerts. Towards the end of 1916, Morthus was introduced to the London Welsh psychoanalyst Ernest Jones, and after a brief courtship, they married at Marlebon Register Office on the 6th of February 1917. This came as a shock to a circle of friends, few of whom were aware the ceremony was even taking place. Her parents were unable to attend after Ernest Jones brought forward the ceremony by a day. As the leading exponent in Britain of Freud's ideas, Ernest Jones was a highly controversial figure and avowed atheist. He anticipated his wife would gradually relinquish the simple-minded beliefs of a religious faith. In response to the evident tensions in the marriage around this issue, Jones agreed to a marriage ceremony at the Charing Cross Welsh Presbyterian Chapel, which took place the following September with Owen's family and friends present. There were also tensions in the marriage around the role Jones expected his wife to take in supporting his busy professional and social life. Inevitably at the expense of her career as a musician and output as a composer. In the summer of 1918, the couple were holidaying in South Wales, staying at the home of Jones's father at Oystermouth near Swansea, when Morthed Owen developed an acute appendicitis. Ernest Jones hoped his brother-in-law, the imminent surgeon Wilfred Trotter, would be able to travel to Swansea in time to operate, but Trotter advised urgent surgical intervention was needed and the operation was conducted at the family home by William Frederick Brooke, a leading South Wales surgeon. In his autobiography, Jones gave an account of the days leading to her death on 7th September. After a few days, she became delirious with a high temperature. We thought there was blood poisoning till I got Trotter from London. He had once recognised delayed chloroform poisoning. It had recently been discovered, which neither the local doctor nor I had known, that this is a likelihood with a patient who is young, has suppuration in any part of the body, and has been deprived of sugar, as war conditions had then imposed. In such circumstances, only either is permissible as an anaesthetic. This simple piece of ignorance cost a valuable and promising life. We fought hard, and there were moments when we seemed to have succeeded, but it was too late. On the basis of Jones's reference to the best personal news in his correspondence with Freud, Jones's biographer Brenda Maddox suggested that the reason there was no subsequent autopsy was that Owen was pregnant, and to have revealed this to her father and friends would have caused them further distress. 
Morviv Owen was buried on the 11th September in Oystermouth Cemetery, where a gravestone bears the inscription, chosen by Jones, from Goethe's Faust. Das unbeschreiblich, hier ist Skitan. In 1924, Jones arranged, with the assistance of Frederick Corder, the publication of a four-volume memorial edition of sections of an orchestra and instrumental work, and of the compositions for voice and piano. Thanking Jones for the copy he sent her, her close friend Elizabeth Lloyd wrote, Each page brought fresh memories of our lost darling. Centenary editions of some of the songs and piano pieces were published in Cardiff in 1991.